Hey everybody, this is Mr. P. Um, coming to you with uh, your e-learning lesson for ICP for Tuesday, April 28th. And today we're starting a new unit, and this unit is all about electricity. And we're going to start off just talking about electric charge, okay? So what does it mean for something to be electric, electrically charged? Um, different types of charges, how charges interact with one another. So let's first of all define what produces an electric charge. Okay, so it's an excess or shortage of what else but electrons. Okay, what are electrons? So think back to the chemistry unit. Electrons are the subatomic particles, the negatively charged subatomic particles that were orbiting around the nucleus of an atom. The negatively charged particles. Okay, so we'll see that. Um, you know, basically electric current is just the flow of electrons, okay? Um, electric charge, okay, is a property that causes subatomic particles, such as protons and electrons, to either attract or repel each other. So attract, okay, get closer together. Repel means they move away from each other. And we'll talk about in what just different circumstances those things take place. Uh, protons, if you recall, have a positive charge. Again, think protons positive, right? So we'll start with the P. Electrons, of course, we just said, have a negative charge. So remember, in an atom, you have the nucleus, right? So you have neutrons, which are neutral, right? They have no charge, then you've got protons, right, that have positive charges, then you have electrons that are um, orbiting around the outside of the nucleus, okay? Um, so in, in an atom, okay, a cloud of, I'm going to move this up, a cloud of negatively charged electrons, because we just said that Electrons have a negative charge, so negatively charged electrons surrounds the positively charged nucleus. Right? The nucleus is positively charged because it has protons. Okay, of course, protons and neutrons, remember, neutrons don't have a charge, so the, neutron, the nucleus is overall um, positive in charge. Um, the atom itself, like overall, is neutral, which means overall the atom, the atom itself, the entire atom is electrically neutral because it has the same number, okay, or equal numbers of positive and negative charge. So an atom in general, it's a general atom, is neutral because it has the same number of protons as it does electrons, same number of positive charges as it does negative charge. Um, if an atom gains electrons, it becomes a negatively charged ion. Okay, so remember first semester from chemistry, chemistry unit, we talked about an ion being um, an atom that's either gained or lost an electron. Negatively charged ions have gained electrons, they've gained negative charge. Okay, if an atom loses electrons, it becomes a positively charged ion, which and if it loses electrons, that means now there's more protons. So therefore, it's going to be, have more positive charge. It's going to have a net positive charge. Um, so this diagram here represents a neutral atom. You have eight protons in the nucleus, these little green uh, spheres here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you have eight electrons, so that's neutral. Here's a positive ion, because notice... One, two, three, the yellow spheres represent protons. You have three protons, but you only have two electrons. Okay, so this would actually have what we call, we would say a, a plus one charge because there's one more proton than there is electrons. So this would be a positively charged ion because there's three protons and two electrons. Okay, and again, there's more, one more proton than electron, so we call that plus one charge. All right, um, units, okay, so units of charge 
are what we call coulombs. So a coulomb is a unit of electrical charge. And so let's kind of put that in perspective. It takes 6.24 times 10 to the 18, okay, electrons to produce one coulomb. Okay, 6.24 times 10 to the 18. What, what does that look like? Okay, well, Okay, so this many electrons in one coulomb of charge. Okay, so 6.24 times 10 to the 20 or times 10 to the 18, right? You got 624 and then uh, 16 zeros. Okay, so that's just um, putting that in perspective, how many electrons it takes to just produce one coulomb of charge. A uh, lightning bolt is about 10 to 20 coulombs of charge. Uh, a camera flash, that's on the other end of the spectrum, about uh, 0 0.025 coulombs. So just a comparison there. Okay, so um, a lot more charge in a lightning bolt than there is um, in, the flash, in, in the flash of a camera. Okay. Um, so again, Coulomb, unit of electrical charge. Uh, light charges, okay? So charges that are light, what are they going to do? They are going to repel each other, which means light charges don't like each other, okay? They, they're going to move away from each other. They're going to move in opposite directions. Opposite charges attract. Okay, we've heard the saying opposites attract, that goes for electrical charges. Okay, so light charges, okay, so two positive charges, they're gonna go in opposite directions. They don't like each other. They have the same charge. Opposite charges, like a positive and negative, they're gonna be attracted toward each other. Okay, so yeah, electrical charge, okay. Um, Either, has either positive or negative, light charges, so either two positives or two negatives are gonna repel each other, move away from each other, opposite charges are gonna be attracted to each other. All right, um, so let's go ahead and look at what it means to talk about the force of attraction. We talked about charges being attracted to each other, but there's, a force that's involved. So the force of attraction or repulsion between particles or electrically charged objects is simply called the electric force. Okay, electric force. Okay, so the electric force between two objects is directly proportional to the net charge on each object. Okay, so what does that mean? What do we say directly proportional? Well, as net charge increases, the electric force also increases at the same rate. Of course, that would mean that if net charge decreases, electric force would also decrease. Right? So it works both ways. The electric force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the objects. So again, charge okay, is directly proportional to electric force. If we have more charge, we have more force. Okay? Distance is the opposite situation. So as distance between charged objects increases, so we get further away, we actually have a decreased charge. And it says the electric force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the objects. So what that means is that um, the force is one over the distance squared. Okay, so think of it like that. Um, so as obviously as distance increases, as we get a bigger number here, that force is going to decrease, right? Because 
just think of it mathematically, as this number on the bottom gets bigger, we're dividing one by um, a bigger and bigger number, which is going to cause the force to get smaller and smaller. Um, so based on what we just talked about, doubling the net charge, remember, as net charge increases, electric force increases, if we double the net charge, guess what? The electric force is also going to double. If we double the distance between charged objects or charged particles, remember that's the opposite effect. It would be reduced to one-fourth of the original force. If the distance between two objects is doubled, the force is going to decrease by a factor of one-fourth. It's going to be one-fourth the original force. Why one-fourth? Remember, it's one over distance squared. So if we double, think of one over two squared, right, which is one over four. Okay. Um, and inside the atom, these electro forces, forces are much stronger than gravitational forces, okay? So let's recap that, okay? So the electric force between two objects or two charged particles um, depends on the net charge, okay? So if net charge of one of the particles is increased, Okay, the electric force between the two objects is increased. Dis it depends on distance. If distance is increased so they get further apart, the force is weaker, okay? The force decreases. And again, it, the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So it decreases by one over d squared, one over distance squared. Um, so let's just look at a quick diagram here. So, in letter A, okay, opposite charges are attracting. Right, I got a positive and negative charge. Arrows move, show them moving toward each other. We just said before that opposite charges attract. In letter B, what's going on in B? Okay. Um, doubling one charge, okay, so let's say we double the positive charge, that's actually going to double the force on both charges. So, Again, we can see that the arrows are longer because we have more force. The arrows represent, um, you know, the magnitude of the force. And letter C, okay, letter C, we have two positive charges, and we can see they're moving in opposite directions because we said opposite charges repel. They move away from each other. They don't like each other, okay? So doubling the distance, and that's going to make the force as we set up uh, in our, one of our um, notes up there, it would make the force one-fourth as great as the original force, okay? Because the force decreases by one over distance squared as we move further away. Okay, um, so in our uh, next section, in part two of section 20.1, which is this is chapter 20, we will uh, talk more about properties of electrical charge and um, different things that occur with, uh, with electrical charges. Okay, until then, uh, we'll see you later.